Hey you guys, in today's video I'm going to be showing how you can make your own 3D printed Deadpool mask. Hey guys, Uncle Jesse here, and I am a big time fan of Deadpool and was absolutely thrilled when they announced the movie, and especially when it was released a year ago. I can remember the first time that I actually saw one of the trailers for the movie and immediately thought, I need one of those masks. I absolutely need one of those masks. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I 3D printed a Deadpool face shell. This is the actual piece that goes underneath the fabric mask. You'll see this for anybody that's doing cosplay for things like Spider-Man or in this case, Deadpool. What's also great about this is that the eye pieces will be interchangeable. So I'll be able to swap those out as well to show off different facial expressions, which is oh so important with this particular character. All right, let's get things started. All right, here is the final piece. Get this off. Get all that support material. Crazy. Looking good though, looking really good, nice and clean. A Little bit of curling here, but not bad. I'm gonna get that cleaned up and see if I can get this assembled. So I've got most of the pieces that I've printed previously cleaned up. So this is the bottom half of the face mask here. Here is the very back portion. So what's gonna happen is I've got these cleaned up and it's gonna go right here, uh, glue these together. I need to clean up, this is the last piece that I printed. By the way, this took all in all, pretty much like almost two days straight of printing just to get all of this printed. Uh, I will, I'm not sure if I'm actually going to smooth this out at all because this is a, a mask is going to go over it, the actual fabric portion. But yeah, yeah, so far it's coming out looking really good. The eye pieces are looking amazing on this as well. So all of these will basically fit right in here. I've still got to do a clean, a bit of cleanup on all of those and we'll have these all magnetically attaching here when you slide them in. So very cool. Uh, so let's get this cleaned up. I'm trying to keep these a bit organized, all of the different uh, eye pieces here. So I think I might print a few more. There are, I believe, six options in total that you can print. So I've printed four of them at this point. And they take, for me, uh, at the level of detail that I'm printing them at, it takes about five to six hours to print both sets. So All right, so I've got everything glued together and it's looking pretty good. I've got a few gaps here that I'm looking to fill in as well as I just wanna strengthen this overall. So what I'm planning on doing is applying some XTC 3D to this to again, help smooth it out before I paint it and uh, also just really, again, str help strengthen this up. But before I do that, to help fill some of these gaps, I'm gonna use this Pro Bond wood filler. I used this the last time for my Overwatch Reaper mask and it worked pretty well, uh, but I'm gonna, this time around, instead of doing it after I apply the XTC 3D, I'm gonna apply it first and then apply XTC 3D over everything so it's all really sealed in and locked in tight with that epoxy coating. So this is really isn't that necessary of a step if you're just planning on using this as is and applying cloth to this afterwards, but I just wanna keep it nice and clean and probably paint it red until I find the appropriate cloth to cover the mask in. So let me get this started here. And I've got a big glob of super glue here on the side of the mask. <laughs> All 
All right, so this is looking great. The wood filler actually dried up really nicely here, and I've sanded a few areas, and I just need to finish sanding a few of these other pieces here. I went back over and applied a little bit more wood filler just to help even this one section out since it wasn't exactly smooth, and all the other areas are looking really nice. Everything's feeling pretty solid here on these joins with just using some super glue and wood filler. I've got some 220 sandpaper right here that I'm just using to again help smooth this down before I go in and apply some XTC 3D to this which is this product right here that you can pick up from smooth on I'll have a link to this that you can pick up over on Amazon this stuff is great it really helps smooth out your prints and uh, again it's one of my favorite things because I hate doing this right here sanding this is a pain in the ass it makes a huge mess and takes up a lot of time. So this just really helps smooth everything out before I go in and paint anything. All right, so here's the mask. It's all smoothed out from the XDC 3D. And now what I'm gonna do is just uh, give it a little bit of a sanding here to help the paint stick and it should be good to go. <laughs> All right, so here it is in black using Flex Seal, and you can see that it's really helped cover up the seam lines here. You can still see them a little bit here. I'm not too concerned, again, because I'm gonna be covering this with actual cloth, trying to find some that will match the, the Deadpool look there, but it gives us this cool little textured feel, and it also makes it almost like a rubbery feel to it. It's not that hard uh, material that you're used to with, with spray paint and plastic. This is also the same thing that Carmelo Nazario, who created the original Batman file that I printed, used to coat his Batman mask, and it came out looking amazing. So I think I'm gonna apply that same stuff here to my Batman mask. It gives it that nice little textured, divoted look there. It's not perfectly smooth. So very, very cool, and here you can see on the back how it sort of splatters in there to give it that effect. Very, very cool. All right, so now I'm gonna actually go ahead and start coating this in some red. And there are some geese outside as well. <laughs> All right, so I've got the magnets here glued in place into the bases of the eye sockets. The space is a little snug, and I've actually broke off both the top piece and the bottom piece trying to drill that out in order to fit the magnet in there, but it was still able to get it in place. I'm gonna probably end up building this up a little bit more just so it can be a little bit more stable, especially after um, getting the eye magnets assigned as well. To do that, what I'm gonna do is temporarily just use hot glue, just so I can do that for this video and so I can see how this is gonna work, swapping them on and off using magnets. The problem is the back of the eye pieces here are curved and it's not really giving the, uh, the magnets a really good place for them to adhere to. So I'll end up building that up using something like Aves Epoxy Sculpt. I'll include a link down below uh, to where you can pick this up. It's a two-part material where you basically mix these two together and it works as if it's a like a clay that you do not need to bake. And after you're done sculpting it, it will harden within, I think it's like six hours to eight hours to 24 hours, I can't remember the exact amount here, but it works really well and I've used it on a number of other projects. So I can end up building up this area where it broke off here as well, or adding more support to the back of it, as well as building up this space and a place for the magnet to actually be embedded into so it fits nice and flush here. So part of this, I will, well, uh, you'll notice on this particular piece that's glued in place is you'll see that there's an opening here around the eye. That right now, I'm not concerned about just because I'm gonna have to take fabric here at some point. Let's see if that took, went off. Oh, look at that. And it, it did not come off and break. So here I've got the, the magnets hot glued onto the back, these super glued in, and I can just 
snap them in place. I'll have to figure out a way to make sure that they go on straight here. Uh, but what I was saying is there's a little bit of a space here around the eye sockets, and that's actually not a bad thing. I might still end up refining them a bit, but what's going to end up happening is I'm going to have to get fabric here that I'm going to end up wrapping around this face shell, and it's going to end up going inside this here. So I need to make sure that there is enough space for the fabric to go in as well as this for to rest uh, snugly. So more than likely, I'm gonna have to refine these after I get fabric on them, but for now, it'll be okay. Also, I should probably look at smoothing them out, but I used a matte black spray paint and I think it looks really good with the matte black. I just need to further smooth this out a bit to remove some of the lines from the 3D printing and make sure to bump up some of the details that are here. So let me hot glue this other eye piece on and get it going. So here are my magnets. And how I'm doing this again is, uh, so these are already glued in place. I am basically putting the magnets on top of each other to make sure that they are glued in place correctly. And then I put a little bit of dab on this one. And a little bit of glue on this one. And try not to get the glue on the actual mask, which I've just did and then glue these bad boys on top of it before it dries. And then just position it into the position that you want them to be in. So here I've got mine like so, and let me peel that off, which is also peeling my paint because I don't have any protective coating on it, which is okay. I'll show you guys something else that I'll be doing with this here momentarily. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry and then I will give you guys a look at the semi put together Deadpool mask. Pretty cool here. All right, let's take a second to talk about the eyes here. I actually used, again, temporarily something to fill in for the white portion of the eyes that's sort of transparent and what that is is nothing other than a cheap plastic cup here. I've got literally, I don't know, a hundred and some odd of these that I picked up from Walmart that I used to mix for different things here. Uh, saw these sitting on the desk and figured these might work well. So all I did was slice a section of them open here and then super glued them to the back of the eye piece here. So again, this is just something for temporary purposes until I can get cloth in place, until I can figure out the exact way that I want the eyes to sit on the mask, etc. This way, at least it will look pretty cool sitting over on my shelf. Not bad though, really not bad. And again, you can kind of see how you can see my fingers behind it. So it is a little transparent, definitely not something that you'd be able to wear at a convention or anything like that. All right, you guys, and here it is, the finished face shell Deadpool mask. This thing came out much, much better than I was anticipating. Very excited about this particular project and now researching to find out where I can get the actual fabric for this. This file was provided by Max Craft. You can find his page down below in the links in the description. He has an Etsy page where he creates and shares these particular Pepecura files as well as STL files that you can print with a 3D printer. So you can check that out. It includes the actual face shell as well as the different eye pieces. So really great build. I highly recommend checking it out as well as the files themselves to purchase are pretty dang cheap. So not, not a bad deal. I printed the face shell using Make Shaper Yellow PLA. And for the eye pieces, I use Matter Hackers Pro PLA, their black PLA option. And again, both of these worked extremely well on my BQ Whip Box as well as my BQ Hephaestos 2. So this, again, I think has worked out really well. I should mention the flex seal that I used on this particular piece. I am really, really liking the texture of this. It has almost like a skin type texture with all of the divots and it. it's not perfect. And for this particular character, he's not perfect and this thing should look dirty. I also, after painting it red, I went in and there were some divots from just tossing it around here uh, and manhandling it a bit in my workshop. So I went in and basically scratched it up a little bit more and then applied some black paint to it to weather it a little bit and then smeared it off. You've seen probably that in some of my other videos already. And if you haven't, you should really check 
check out some of my other videos. But what I most enjoy about this is being able to hot swap out the different eyepieces here. So again, everything here is connected by magnets and just snaps back into place. And the beauty of this is I can just slide this on just like this. So not bad at all. Uh, more than likely what I'll end up doing is to make this fit a little bit better. I will include some foam. I'll be inserting that on here. I probably could have printed this about maybe 5% smaller, maybe a little bit less, 3 to 5% smaller, and it would have given me a little bit more of a snug fit, but this honestly is not bad considering that I am going to have to apply fabric around the edges. Who knows how much of that's going to be tucked up on the inside, and again, I can just apply some foam here to really get it to sit better on my face. So all in all, I'm really, really liking this mask. And let me just show you some of the other options that I printed for the eyepieces. So thanks again for MaxCraft for providing the STL file here for this particular project. Again, you can find links down below to where you can go and purchase and print one of these for yourself. Again, I highly, highly recommend this. So far, loving this project, and I'll be including updates as I continually make progress on this, including getting fabric and scuzzing up the fabric and working out all the details with the eyes here. So thanks again for watching, guys, and if you haven't already, make sure to hit the like button. Also, leave me some comments down below letting me know how excited you are for Deadpool 2. Hopefully, that'll happen sometime later next year. Maybe that'll be a little cameo of Deadpool in the Logan movie. I don't know. We'll find out. Could be pretty cool. But hey, thanks again for watching, guys, and as always, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I have lots of videos coming up in the works. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.